Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and our 10 minute tutorial series. In today's episode, we're diving into the creation of customizable homing missiles in Unreal Engine using the Niagara system. I've made a unique texture for this tutorial, which you can grab for free from my Patreon. The link will be in the description below. Feel free to use your own textures if you prefer. For those wanting to save some time or dig deeper into the mechanics, the full project files will also be available exclusively to my Patreon subscribers. As always, if this tutorial proves useful, please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. So I've tried to film this a couple times and there's no way I can get this in 10 minutes because it's a pretty involved um, system. So I'm going to go through every single part and show you what's in it and uh, you can pause and make this on your own. I'm also going to include this target and this smoke um, inside of my uh, Patreon, so you can download those for free. For the material, uh, things to note, if you click your output, make sure you go blend mode to translucent, shading model to unlit, the rest is good default. And for texture sample, make sure you have that updated smoke texture in there or whichever one you're gonna use. The rest of this is good default and your dynamic parameters, you wanna set um, that first one I set named UVs and the second one is density. So that's good for the material. Inside of our Niagara system, uh, things to note, properties, uh, there will all be the same properties here, so make sure everyone has the same thing set here. For the emitter state, uh, this is the only one that's different, and it's self once fixed in one, so just make sure uh, it's set up like that if you want it to look like mine. I have a spawn rate here that I have set to five, and a spawn burst um, instantaneous also set to five. This will shoot missiles individually as well as all at once, like you see in the uh, example over here. So you can choose which one of those you want for yours. Initialized particle, uh, doing random life, 1.2 to 1.75. Uh, set your color to whatever you want your missile to look like. Uh, mass mode doesn't matter. And then sprite size, I did a uniform 15. Shape location, I did a sphere, uh, 10 radius. This is the only one that's different as far as uh, the distribution goes. I have it set to 0.5 and 0.5, which has it um, spawning them over the top of the sphere rather than um, anywhere, so they shouldn't shoot down very often. I did an add velocity from point, and I for my speed, I changed it to a random range float uh, using this, and it went from 2,000 to 4,000, but play with those as you need. I didn't apply initial forces here. Uh, the next thing I did a drag 0 0.25, a spring force. I did a force of five. I clicked right here. If you type in user, select read from new user parameter and come over here and you can right click and rename that to homing target. And then make sure that the particle equilibrium has that um, homing target in there. For the spring tightness, change that right here to a float from curve and then do a linear ramp up. For the scale curve part, um, I did a ran random range float two to five, and the rest of this should be good default. Uh, just make sure it looks like that and it, you'll get the same results. I did a curl noise force, 4,000 and 100. I added a collision. This is all default, so that's good to stay like that. Uh, next, I did a kill particles in volume. I did a sphere with a 70 radius. This was pretty good on that target that I have, um, so it looks pretty good, but this will need to be adjusted depending on your target, whether it's uh, too big or too small, just change it however. And you can grab your homing target here and drag it into volume origin, and then it should uh, produce this. And that's good for that first one. Again, those are the same. Here we're doing a spawn particles from other emitter. And the emitter name, you'll have an issue to fix, so fix that. The emitter name is projectile. It needs to match this one. And then the spawn rate, and this is the spawn rate max. I matched those, so 500 and 500 there. Um, I matched this color as well with this one. So these three, these first three uh, emitters have the same color. The life, I did a random 0 0.1. Mass mode doesn't matter again here. And for a sprite size, I did a uniform 10. Uh, scale sprite size, I did a linear ramp down, so uniform or curve from float, and then linear ramp down. Drag is a 0 
everything else is good there. For the uh, next, that's the same. Oh, this one's uh, in self, infinite, and one here. Same thing here, self, infinite, and one. Spawn particles from our other emitter. Use that same projectile. Again, that's this. And I did 200 and 200. Initialized particle, I did 0.2 to 0.5 for the life. Uh, same color as the first two. Mass mode doesn't matter. Sprite size mode, I did random between 2 and 10. All is default other than that. That's all default. Uh, shape location, I did a sphere with a radius of 5. The rest is default. For the scale sprite size here, I did a linear ramp down. Again, curve from floats. Uh, drag 0.25. For this curl noise, I got a thousand here. Um, this is the sparks here. So if you go really high, it looks more sparky. Or real low, it looks less sparky. But uh, I'm going to leave it where it was. Um, that's good for this one. For this next one, again, self infinite. Uh, this particle, uh, spawn particles from emitter, use trail 01. So whatever your second emitter, whatever you name that one. And I just did a spawn rate of 5 and 5. Initialize particle, I went from 0.2 to 0.1, 2. And then for the color mode here, I just wanted white and I wanted it to be pretty emissive. So I multiplied 200 to each of these. Uh, sprite size, I did random uniform, 20 and 100. Uh, for this one, the sprite rotation does matter because we're using a, a material and we want that texture to look more natural. So I did a random on sprite rotation mode. The rest is a uh, good default. Uh, sample, that's all default. Here I did a shape location, another sphere, and I did a 10. The rest is default. Um, scale sprite size, linear ramp down again. Same drag, 0.25. Uh, just a small curl noise on this one, so 150. For the gravity, I only wanted it in the Z direction, so I did a random range vector, and I'm going from 200 to 500 in the Z. Then I added that dynamic material parameters from our material, so we can change those. And on the UVs, I changed this to a random range uh, float by this little drop down, and I did 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. And then my density, I have at 0 0.2. Here I did a scale color, and on the alpha, only the alpha, I set it to float from curve and did that linear ramp down. And then in your sprite renderer on this one, make sure this material is set to that uh, updated smoke trail or whatever texture you're going to use. And that's it for our Niagara system. Finally, we need to set this to actually um, be able to be shot off of our player. So I went to our capsule component. You can do it off the mesh or really anywhere in here. And um, I added a Niagara particle system and I renamed it to missiles. And then over in your details panel, make sure that Niagara system asset is set to that homing um, asset. And then I have auto activate off. Also, um, I went ahead and dragged this up too. So it's not shooting, it should spawn there, but um, I don't want it to shoot off the ground. So I put it around the chest on the uh, player. In our event graph, I set this to um, the right mouse button, and you can do um, input key and go find any of these and then change it to what you want. And that's what I did there, so right mouse button. And then uh, drag your missiles out and do a set active off of your missiles. And I just set these both, make sure they're both checked. From there, I want to say get all actors of class, and it's going to be that target which is um, here, and I'm gonna drag that out into my world actually to use as a target. Um, it looks like there's already one in this world, so I'm gonna delete that. Um, so get all actors of class, set it to that target blueprint. Out of this array, I um, do a for each loop. And I'm only doing this because I have one target. This wouldn't be ideal for a game that could have multiple targets. You'd wanna set it to, um, whichever target you're actually locked onto, and then get that target's world location. But for now, I only have one target, so that's what's coming out of here. And I'm grabbing that sphere off of that target, and I'm getting its world location, and then I'm plugging that into um, this. But to get this, you come off, drag your missiles out, 
and you'll um, say set Niagara variable and look for the vector three one. And then this variable name, homing target, needs to match this name here. So you can right click and copy display name and just paste that in and then that target will set there. And then if we go uh, play this, our target is there. And whenever I right click, we shoot our missiles. And there you have it. We just created a customizable homing missile system in less than 10 minutes. Remember, you can really make this your own by adjusting your variety of settings, including color, length of missile, trail smokes, and a lot more. You can even add your own emitters to give it a unique touch that fits perfectly into your game project. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out a lot. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel to stay updated with future tutorial tips and tricks. If you're interested in getting your hands on the full project file, remember that they're available for download on my Patreon for exclusive tiers. It's a great way to save time and to help you if you're running into any issues with this project. You'll find that link in the description. I also invite you to check out my website and join my Discord community where we can connect with other game developers, share work, and get feedback. As always, happy developing, and I'll see you in the next one.